military dead. Most of the men were unrecognizable. But the history of what took place along a remote river called the Little Bighorn nearly 150 years ago may soon be rewritten. I think this has become the, the great history mystery of the 19th century. Researchers now believe they may have uncovered new information, findings that could prove the existence of an eyewitness, a survivor who just may be Custer's last man. June 25th, 1876. Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer and over 600 troopers of the 7th United States Cavalry arrive in the Little Bighorn Valley of southern Montana. The cavalry has come to subdue a village of defiant Indians. Thousands of Sioux and Cheyenne, under the leadership of the great holy man, Sitting Bull. Sitting Bull? the great spiritual and political leader who just several weeks before had received a famous vision of soldiers falling into camp upside down with their horses. That signified a great pending victory. Sitting Bull's vision of defeating the cavalry seems impossible in the face of America's relentless expansion. For a century, the United States has pushed the frontier west, herding tribe after tribe onto agencies or reservations. Only a few tribes still stand in the way of America's manifest destiny, the nation's quest to conquer the continent from ocean to ocean. Just seven years earlier, the final mile of track was laid, completing the first transcontinental railroad. Now, America believes it's time to close the frontier once and for all. The government would like all remaining roaming Indians to come into a reservation and become agency Indians. And there are a number out there who have vowed never to do this. They just wanted to stay out in the Powder River country, mostly in the West, and just stick to the uh, traditional Indian way of life. Of course, that was vanishing at the time. These last defiant Indians need a leader, and they find one in Sitting Bull. Thousands of angry tribesmen, including war chiefs like Gaul and Crazy Horse, gather into a colossal wandering village. In the spring of 1876, the village arrives on the plains of Montana. The village was always on the move. They knew the army was out after them. And to the United States Army, to capture a fleeing village was an impossible task. The army sends out three massive columns to close in on Sitting Bull's village from the east, the west, and the south. They just hoped that this three-pronged effort, one of them would find the Indians and take care of them, either chastise them heavily or herd them uh, back to the Indian reservation. And once they pick up Sitting Bull's trail, the generals know there's one officer with the guts, the ego, and the sheer hunger for victory to hunt down the Indians. George Armstrong Custer. In just two weeks, it will be the nation's 100th birthday, July 4th, 1876. Defeating these stubborn Indians will be a birthday present to the USA. George Custer, the rock star of the frontier. He was among the more famous and popular generals that emerged from the Civil War as a leader of cavalry, and his record was almost unblemished. He was widely regarded as um, the most successful and daring uh, cavalry leader on the Union side. A lot of people compare him to George Patton. The other one is? The other one? Than life. Are they, oh, Healthy what? Healthy ego. I have no he idea. Was photographed more than anybody else in his day. Don't be anywhere around the room. There's more photographs of George Custer than there are of Lincoln. Like a lot of stars, Custer's career has seen some real highs and lows, starting with his earliest days at West Point. George Armstrong Custer was, as we would say professionally, just a very 
bad cadet. He was he was a problem. He famously graduated last in his class, 34th of the 34 cadets in the class of June 1861. Custer gets his diploma just weeks after the opening shots of the Civil War. Just in time for a young officer to turn himself into a legend. During the Civil War, 